Hi, this is Marcel of Marcel on Tech, and today we're talking about a smartwatch. Actually, a surprisingly smartwatch. If I show you the box here, we have got the AmazeFit Balance Cheetah Edition with a square face. Slightly long name, you can see it here on the website. It is a very decent device, but is it worth your money? And is it worth, indeed, that price range as well? Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to do a little walkthrough of the watch and its functionality. But first, I just wanted to give you my thoughts on the first opening. Now, it is a very nice looking watch. I have to say, a lot of people get it confused with the Apple Watch. And a lot of people think, oh, okay, that looks like the actual Apple Watch Ultra. And then you take a closer look after a second or two and you realize that's definitely not the Apple Watch Ultra. But from that initial impression, they've actually done very, very well to kind of give you that air or impression. But they've also kept the materials clearly very cheap. So you get this kind of contradiction, but there are some definite strengths and weaknesses, which is what I want to talk to you about next. So let's take a closer look at the watch. Okay, so let's take a closer look now at the AmazeFit Cheetah Square Edition. And let's take a little tour around the watch. So we do get this strap in the box and it's very, very plasticky feeling. So it's cheap, it's light, um, it's not time for bed. So that's an interesting notification. Um, but basically it is comfortable to wear and it's big enough that it will fit most watch or most wrists, should I say. Um, and then going around. So we have got this three button configuration. So this is our quick button in order to get to our last workout. So if I tap that, that was my last workout and it quickly goes to that, which is pretty cool actually. And that helps, particularly if you're doing a lot of the same sport. Then you've got um, this spinning bezel, which when the screen is on, you can navigate to your quick widgets here. And when you go scroll upwards, then you get your notification shade that gets pulled down. And when you push it inwards, then you've got all of your app access from here as well, okay? So those are pretty functional, and then that's kind of like a back button. They can be configured to do other things as well, um, but that's how I've got it set up. So I do really like the coloring, I have to say. I do like the color matching of the orangey yellow there. Um, but again, none of this is any is metal. So they're saving on weight, but they're definitely giving it a, a cheaper feel. Then you've got your sensors on the back here. Of course, you've got your heart rate sensors. Uh, it does do blood pressure as well and oxygen saturation, which is quite interesting. Um, then, of course, you've got your quick release for your watch straps because, of course, they are interchangeable. You've got nothing on the other side. But again, you can see here you've got this kind of lighter uh, aluminium looking bezel, but it's not actually metal in any way. So that is the design. Now, what I want to do is talk about some of the cons first before I get onto the pros, because this watch is good, but it definitely has limitations and I really don't understand the price point. So first and foremost, we get for some reason unresponsive taps. So if I double tap the screen, you see now it works typically, but when I'm using the watch and I'm not now it works, brilliant. So I will get many times when I will lift up the watch to look at it and I get unresponsive taps. So now this is on the always on display and as you can see, it's nice and bright, but let's get to our pros first. So if I tap that, I'm not getting any responses, double tap, there we go. So now it's not at all responsive, whereas sometimes it really is. So that was a good demonstration actually. Um, so that I don't understand and there's nothing I can find in the settings to configure that. It does not have Google Pay. That for me is a pain in the backside. I love my Google Pay on my uh, S4. So um, this one does not have any payment methodology whatsoever, which is a big letdown, especially for the price point. So something I forgot to mention is that actually on this device, you cannot make or receive any phone calls whatsoever. You can respond to text messages, but only with the pre-installed auto responses, which can be edited, but you cannot type your own message response. That is a massive con. As mentioned already, it does feel cheap. It doesn't necessarily look cheap, which is good, but it does feel cheap in the hand. So if that's something that bothers you, that's gonna be relevant. 
Now, the, uh, the software is one of the things that I found to be a little bit unreliable. So there are aspects of this. 80% of this is very good. So you've got these quick access widgets from your weather to your workout, last results, um, your alarms, and so on. This is, I find, is good. It's all configurable. You can reorganize them how you want. But one of the features they're really marketing is Amazon Alexa, but it literally won't connect. It refuses to connect to my Alexa, which I have on my phone, of course, and at home, etc. But I just cannot get it to sync with my account, which is really very boring and annoying. So that software glitch in itself is makes it very unreliable. Then, of course, we've got here the uh, layout. Now, this layout is pretty good. Some of these are a bit weird. So the one tap measuring I've never really used. I did test it out. That's quite useful if you want to hit all of the sensors in one go and get a result. Um, PAE, which is your physical activity indicator, bizarre way to call it, but anyway, you get a scoring on a regular basis. Um, I do find the sleep tracking very good. Now, again, that will come on to our pros, but as you can see here, the sleep tracking is pretty detailed, and when you go into the phone, you get even more details. From okay, so let's go ahead and put the watch on now, so we can just see that it pops on like so, and it does have the tucking away mechanism there, which I really like in the newer watch bands, which are much more comfortable, way more practical than having something flapping about here. Now, as you can see, I've got very tiny wrists, so it fits my wrist absolutely perfectly. So the screen size, despite having quite severe bezels, um, is actually very, very good. And I live in a very sunny part of the world. So in order to select a watch face, let's try and find one that has a bit of a lighter background. As you can tell, I like the dark ones. And they're obviously emphasizing those as well. But if we go for one that has full color, here we go. And there you can see the borders around, particularly at the top. The border is pretty thick there, um, but it really hasn't affected me. And I don't mind it in any way whatsoever. So that has been not a problem. So the screen itself, I've been really pleased with 1.5 inch. Um, it is perfectly adequate. You've got the always on display there with all the different watch faces. So you get different variations. They've all been really good. I have to say, I really like the watch faces. There's not a huge amount, but you've definitely got plenty there for you to choose from within the ZEP app, uh, which of course is what you install on your phone. And then of course, um, those watch faces are variable with having more information or less information, depending on what you want and how you like to configure it. Here, we've mostly got fitness bases, a lot of information there. All of these are fully downloadable. Um, and they work very, very well. And because they're very lightweight, they don't take a lot of time to install. So it's very, very straightforward. Now, as you can see, navigating around the watch is pretty quick, actually. When you do get the screen going on and you roll up, this scroller is particularly useful. You even get a little bit of haptic feedback, which is actually really, really nice. Um, it's very mild, but it definitely works. And you can feel that you're scrolling, or if you accidentally trigger it, you'll know because the wrist will, the watch will buzz you. So it is pretty good. And as you can see, we can move around the apps pretty quickly. If I come back, we go into that. Let's say we want to quickly get into uh, one of our other settings. Let's go to PAE, PAI even. And these are my scores for the last seven days. So you can see I've achieved my goals quite successfully. Um, and then it gives me an overall and I can scroll through and so on. But as you can see, because it's a lightweight piece of software, it's not running on Wear OS it is pretty fast moving, which I like. And as a result of that, the best feature, one of the best features of this watch is battery life. The battery life is a beast. I've got 31% there, but I've had this on my wrist consistently for the last four and a half days and I've worked out and I've had always on display as well. So the battery life is an absolute winner. You're gonna get, with all the sensors on, five days. With, all, with some sensors switched off or without always on display, you're probably going to get up to eight days, no problem at all. And that is a massive bonus. That's one of the strengths of this that I absolutely love. I do have to say, I think the sensors are very interesting. I um, actually have a tennis setting. I play paddle tennis. And uh, when I do that, it actually gives me a very detailed report on my uh, stroke. So, for example, if I do forehand, backhand, um, it will tell me the ratio of that. And it's very, very interesting. It gives you more basic information on the watch, but in the app, it tells you in much more detail. What I like here is that it gives you your aerobic effort and your anaerobic effort, and it also tells you how much recovery time it thinks you're going to need. 
So that is pretty detailed and actually quite interesting. Um, it tells you whether or not you're going to need 12, 24, maybe 32 hours. I had one workout where it recommended 96 hours of, re of recovery, which I think is perhaps a little excessive, um, and I didn't do that. But um, it, is, uh, it is quite a useful uh, information. There are additional information things like the ZEP Coach, which is a paid for plan that you can subscribe to. Now that is optional and you don't, have, you don't feel like you're losing anything by not having it. It's not like Google, where Google were very enthusiastic for you to subscribe and it released and unlocked all the information. Here you get about 90% of your information, but if you want that additional coaching, then uh, obviously it's something that can be activated at a cost, which is very cool. There you go, there's the full-time recovery recommendation. That was from my workout this morning. Heart rate monitor seems extremely accurate, as does the blood oxygen, and it's just a case of tapping on it, and obviously it will read that after a given period of time. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so there it's given me my blood oxygen results in real time. It says 95%, which seems a little low. Um, I am currently fasting, so uh, I'm probably showing some sort of slower blood than normal, but uh, it is a fantastic little system, and I really do quite like how it works. It's still loading up certain information, and you get more detail on the app itself. So all of this is available here. There are definitely pros and cons to this device, uh, but I have to say, I think they've got the price point wrong. But if you get this device for the purposes of fitness tracking and a basic watch, and you can get it at the right price, this is a great watch to have. And it's very, very comfortable to wear with great battery life as well. So let's talk about that a little bit more and get into my conclusion. Okay, so now we've seen all the features of the AmazeFit Balance Cheetah Edition Square Face. And I would love to know what your thoughts are on this watch. Do you think it looks like the Apple Watch Ultra, at least at a glance? Do you think the way that they've made it using the cheaper materials, but with the very high quality sensors, and obviously the software from the ZEP app as well? I'd love to know what your thoughts are. If you've got one, please put a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. We're fast approaching our first goal for this year, which is really exciting. And I'm very excited about pushing this channel forward. And that's all with your support. So I would love to have any feedback that you can provide. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye-bye for now.